guys? This is Vince from Help the Show, UFC Lightweight, and you're watching Combat Sports Coverage. Hey, what's going on? This is Thomas Gal Denzi with Combat Sports Coverage. And on this edition, I'll be interviewing UFC fighter and Ultimate Fighter contestants Vince from Hell Pachel over his upcoming UFC fight June 29th, where he'll be taking on undefeated fighter Roosevelt Roberts live on ESPN. So Vince, tell me how your training camp is going so far, about one week out from this amazing fight. Uh, training camp's going well. My training camp's basically over now. Um, actually, that's a lie. I got one more hard day tomorrow. Tomorrow's my last uh, hard sparring day. And then uh, I fly out to Minneapolis on Monday. I'll be out there for the week, you know, doing my thing, um, doing some last-minute prep work for the fight, you know, photo stuff and interviews for the UFC and, and up, upcoming for the fight. And then uh, the weight cut and then time to beat this dude's ass. <laughs> That's exciting. And uh, how much weight do you typically cut uh, fight week? Uh, well, I usually start from about like 195 pounds. And work my way down to right now I'm about 166 pounds. And then uh, I like to stay between like 165 and 170 when I uh, dehydrate myself and cut my water weight. Oh, yeah. So, there. so definitely you have and a then, good uh, weight cut. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very strict in my diet and my weight cut and stuff, my regimen. Um, so I'm, I'm, I usually don't have any bad weight cuts. I've had two, I want to say, that, I mean, they weren't like bad where I was like, I need to go to the hospital or anything, nothing that serious, but just shitty weight cuts where I was like, fuck, this sucks. <laughs> Why am I doing this still? And, uh, and so for everyone that doesn't know, uh, who and where are you training with for this fight camp? Um, I train in my typical gyms. Uh, Peterson Grapplers is my main gym in Valencia, California that I train at. Um, I also train at Street Sports in Simi Valley. Uh, I train at House of Champions um, in, I want to say it's in the San Fernando Valley. I want to say it's like a Van Nuys or Northridge area. Um, I also train at City of Tong in uh, Azusa. I train at Muscle Farm in Burbank. And then I also train at a buddy's uh, garage that we converted into a gym we call the Batcave. Oh, that's so awesome. I'm kind of all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I definitely like that. It's always good to jump around. I feel like you won't get uh, that comfortable since you're always moving around going to gym to gym. Yeah, I'm definitely not comfortable in any aspect of, of my gyms where I train. So there's there's always things in every gym that, that make me uncomfortable and as a fighter, that's what we need. You know what I mean? We got we to gotta be good at being uncomfortable. So that's what I put myself – the situations I put myself in. And how do you see this fight playing out with your opponent, Roosevelt Roberts? Um, I see me beating the shit out of him and him hoping this fight ends quick because it ain't going to be a good night for him. Um, I'm not going to talk shit about him because I don't know the guy. I'm sure he's a cool dude and all, but I'm looking to come out there and start this kid quick. You know what I mean? I'm going to put a statement on this. Um, everyone's asking about my age and, and my fighting and having fought in a year and yada yada. But when it comes to fight time, everyone's going to realize that's just nothing but a bunch of bullshit to me. Uh, definitely getting me excited. I can definitely tell the seriousness and intensity is in your face. Uh, I've been following your career for a long time. I always know when you go out there, you're going to go put on a show. You always throw heavy leather and you're always looking for a knockout. Uh, would you say this fight is most likely you're going to try to be keeping on your feet? Oh yeah. I mean, I'm, that, that's my fighting style. It's the way I like it. You know what I mean? Um, I've said it before. I don't like to really go for submissions because it's like giving the guy the easy way out. You know what I mean? I want to shut a motherfucker off and make make sure he knows that he got knocked the fuck out and he had no choice in the matter. He, like, he got beat down. So that's always my goal. You know, plus no one will see two guys wrestle and grope on each other. So, you know what I mean? Not that I don't like grappling. I, I very much love wrestling and jiu-jitsu very much, but... Striking is more my style, you know what I mean? And I'm a phone booth fighting kind of guy, so that, if that's the kind of fight I'm going to be in, that's the kind of fight I excel at and I'm one that I want. Exactly, and that's why you're such a fan favorite. And how does it feel to be fighting on such a big stage like ESPN? Uh, feels great. Um, honestly, I've never fought on there yet. It's kind of new, so I don't know. I guess I'll tell you afterwards. Like, <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, ESPN is, is, is an awesome is an awesome. Uh, how can I say this? Uh, I don't want to call it a venue, but it, it's an awesome stage for me for me to showcase my skills and, and let the world know that, that I'm a serious dude. And when I come out there to fight, I come out there to fight, and I ain't no joke. You know what I mean? As much as I like to laugh and have fun and play around and shit, like when it comes to fight time, I'm there to fight. I'm there to wreck shop. So on the ESPN, they're, they're going to definitely see that. 
And so for people that may not know, you were on the Ultimate Fighter of the season 15 where they actually did the season live, which I thought was a really cool uh, aspect. I wish it would do that kind of more often. And then uh, looking back on that time you spent on the Ultimate Fighter, uh, like what was like the best and worst parts being on that show for you? Honestly, the the best part was being on the show. Like it was really cool being in that house with the dudes, and you know what I mean. Like having to having to get that experience and get to go through that experience. The worst part was being sequestered from like my fans, my friends, my coaches, everything that makes you comfortable. Like. That was a shit part. That, and I had to keep my weight down the whole time. Like, I constantly had Dominic Cruz and Eric Tafero bitching at me about my weight because I was one of the biggest dudes in the house. Like I said, I walk around 190, 195 pounds normally. Like, that's my typical weight. So, for me to for me to have to stay around 170, 175 just so I could make weight the next week was kind of a tough thing and a real shitty thing for me because I had a diet. And, I don't know. It just sucks, man. I don't like I don't like having to pick and choose what I have to eat. I like to just <laughs> eat what I come across. You know what I mean? I'm, like, I'm Italian, so... I see food, I eat it, man. Like, I'm that kind of guy. I'm a foodie. But just that, that was really cool. You know what I mean? Like, that was cool. And then that, and then, uh, you know, it was it was an awesome experience. I wouldn't do it again, but definitely glad I did it. And are you still close with any of the uh, the coaches or any of the fighters on the show? Yeah, actually, me and Dominic Cruz are still very good friends. Uh, and our team, you know, all the guys from Alliance, you know what I mean? I still talk to them every once in a while. Miles Jerry, uh, Jeremy Stevens. Like, I'm still tight with those dudes. I love those dudes. They're, they're awesome fucking dudes. Um, even guys from Faber's team, you know, like Mike, uh, Mike Kiesa I'm friends with. Um, a lot of the guys at, at Faber's camp, all the off male guys, I'm friends with all those dudes too, honestly. Like, they're all just super cool dudes. Every, everyone was a super cool dude, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, it wasn't it wasn't really what I thought it was going to be. I kind of thought it was going to be a little bit of more of a pressure cooker where everyone's like kind of butting heads and whatnot, but it really wasn't like that. A lot of the guys are super cool dudes. Um However, that being said, I do want to kick fucking Al. I quit his ass because that fucking pussy got lucky in our fight. I was a little injured when I fought him, and, and he took advantage of it. So I want to rematch him, but that bitch won't rematch me because he knows better. So I mean, maybe one day I'll get it. Yeah, hopefully after you get this victory, maybe they can always set up that rematch. That would be an epic rematch for sure. And I want yeah. to talk to you about uh, Raya Faber. He's stepping back out of retirement, and he'll be taking a fight July 13th in Sacramento versus Ricky Samoan. And I just want to get your thoughts on him coming out of retirement in that fight. Um, honestly, I like Faber a lot. And he's a good fighter. Um, but in my eyes, if it makes him happy, I support him. You know what I mean? Like, I'm that kind of guy. Like, he, I feel like Faber has it in him. Like, he's always been training. He's a healthy dude. He always takes care of himself. So I feel like Faber will do very good. And, and, of course, I want to see him do good. You know what I mean? I'm a little worried because I'm like, okay, he hasn't competed in a while. He's kind of old. He just had a kid. You know what I mean? So I wonder how soft he's been getting in, in his offseason. You know what I mean? But I don't worry about that too much because the kind of person he is, he's, he's always on that grind. So I'm super excited for him. Um, he's, the guy he's fighting is actually managed by the same manager as me. So, I mean, I, don't, I kind of feel bad that I'm rooting for Faber instead of the other dude because I don't really know him. But. You know what I mean? I, I like Faber a lot. He's a really awesome dude, and, and you know what I mean? I love to support him. Yeah, I, I hope uh, Faber pulls it out. He's always been one of my favorite fighters to follow and watch. And I think the guy's fighting is going to be a really tough match for him, but I hope he can pull yeah. it out and, and get that victory for sure. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a tough match, but Faber's a tough dude. He's fought the toughest dudes in the division, so I don't, you know I mean? I don't expect him to go in there and take this fight lightly either. And then, and speaking of your fight card, in the main event, we'll see Junior Dos Anjos taking on Francis Nogueira. And I wanted to get your pick for that fight. Who do you think is going to win that main event heavyweight slugfest? Jeez. I honestly want to go JDS on that one. Like, I like Nganu. He's a tough dude, and he hits like a motherfucker. But JDS, I feel like, is a more seasoned vet. He's a little smarter of a fighter. Um, he's got a little more gas than Nganu will, for sure, I believe. So I want to I'm gonna go JDS on that one, but shit if Ngannou lands one of those one of those bricks, dude, JDS can go down just like any other man. So you never really know. But I'm going JDS. I like the confidence in the underdog. That's awesome. Yeah, I definitely hope JDS can pull it off. But I would probably say Francis is most likely going to get that punch. But we'll see what happens. That's why it's a great main event. And then, uh, will you be staying around for that main event fight to watch it? Oh, yeah. Um, after I fight, uh, I definitely like to stick around and watch the fights. You know what I mean? I like to hang out with you know, my crowd, my friends. I got a lot of people coming to support me. So I definitely want to come. I want to sit in the crowd. 
Um, the last couple times the UFC really hasn't let us come out and sit in the crowd for whatever reasons. I'm not sure why, um, but they make us. They've been making us stay in the back. But I mean, I snuck out the last couple times, so fuck them. If I get sneak out, I'm gonna do it. I might be in the crowd watching the fight, just like a fan, because I like watching fights too. You know what I mean? Like. I, I love watching fights just like the next man, and that's definitely a fight that I'm going to want to watch. So whether I'm stuck in the back and I can't get out or I sneak my ass out of there, I'm going to watch that fight. That's awesome. Yeah, it's definitely a great fight card in the main event. And uh, what do you see if everything goes great for you on Saturday night? What do you typically like to do for celebration? Do you go out and party? Do you just go get some food with the family? I wing it, honestly. Like, uh, it depends where I'm at. Like, I'm an experienced kind of guy, so I don't – I don't really, I don't like to have routines. Like I have routines, but I don't like to have routines outside of my normal routine. So I'm just going to wing it, man. Like last time in New York, I just kind of went from like a bar to like a pizza joint. We were going to go to a strip club and we ended up just going back to my Airbnb. Like had a bunch of people come over there and party at my Airbnb. So like, you know what I mean? Like whatever happens, happens. I'm, I'm that kind of guy. So I'm just going to roll the punches, so to speak, and, and just party with whoever I come across. Definitely sounds like a good time uh, to be hanging out with you after your fight camps. And, uh, do you have any other hobbies outside of training and fighting? I do actually. Um, I'm, a, I'm a streamer. I stream video games. I'm a hardcore video. I love playing video games. Um, I'm an outdoorsy kind of person, so I'm always outside hanging out with friends. You know, what I, mean? I got a remote control car that I play with. You know, or I got my cats. I'll chill with my cats, play with my cats. But typically, I like to I like to play video games. I'll just chill and relax because that way I'm not using too much effort or energy outside of you know what I mean. Because I'll be at the gym, then I'll come home, and then I'll just be playing some video games and just relax and kill people that way since it's frowned upon in real life now yeah so uh you know what i mean I, I just i just like to do that i just like to have a good time just whatever whatever whatever's fun i'm gonna do it and are, are you on twitch and everything is that what you stream on I, I have a twitch account but i just switched over from twitch to mixer so now i'm on mixer uh so my mixer is uh mixer.com slash from help a shell uh just like the rest of my social media you know my twitter my youtube uh, my facebook uh, my instagram it's all from help a shell so that's where everyone can find me and what type of games are you typically playing right now? Uh, right now, I'm really stuck on PUBG. PUBG is like my, my favorite all-time game right now. But I love other games too. Like, uh, here, let me see. I'm on my computer right now, actually. I'm watching I'm watching a couple of friends that I know that stream uh, play their games. Oh, and do you play You play mainly on computer? I play on PC and I have an Xbox. So oh, I play awesome. on both. I'm mainly playing my PC because I just built this PC and I'm getting into PC gaming because it's like way... Like, I've always played on consoles on Xbox. And, like, I've always loved it, you know. Ever since I was a kid and I had my first Atari when I was younger, like, I've always just loved video games. So I've always had consoles. But now that I'm, like, an adult and I could actually afford to build myself a computer, I built myself a computer. So I started playing computer PC games uh, this January. So I'm getting pretty decent at it. But I play games like uh, I have PUBG. Um, I have Battlefield. I have a nerd game called Path of Exile, which is, like, kind of an MMO game, like Wizards and Dragons and shit like that, you know what I mean? And then I got, like, scary games. Like, I have, like, Outlast, which is a super scary game. Um, it scares the shit out of me when I play that game. But I have other games like Division. I play Anthem, Left 4 Dead. So, you know, if it's a fun game and I can play with other people, I, I love to play it. I love those kinds of games. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I used to play a lot, not so much on consoles, but I've always played a lot more games on PC. So that, that's awesome <laughs> to hear you play PC, PC games. I, I feel like they're, they're always just as fun, if not better. Oh, yeah, like... Uh, from, from going to console and then playing a PC, the difference is just night and day crazy. I, I had no idea PC games were this, this like, I had no idea they were this intricate and this good, you know what I mean? Because I've always played on console, so I was like, damn, this is badass, you know what I mean? And I have an Xbox One, so it plays in 4K and, and whatnot, but even 4K playing on that and then going to PC is like, fuck, why, did I even, why, did I, why didn't I have a PC my whole life, you know what I mean? Exactly. But what games do you play? You play some games, man. Add me up on here. We play some games. Get down, dude. Yeah, I need to. Yeah, I, I mean, I haven't been on in a while, but I used to play a lot of like Warcraft and like older games, kind of like that Warcraft Encounter. Oh, right on. Some some like retro games now, I guess. But uh, uh, this will be. Uh, this is about to be your seventh fight inside the UFC, and I just want to see. You know, what, what's made you be like such a long time fighter with the UFC and the company? Honestly, I don't know. I, I think maybe it's just my fighting style. I think it's maybe I don't bitch about shit. You know what I mean? Like the UFC says something, I'm a pit bull. I just go and fucking do it. You know what I mean? Like I don't I don't complain about much. You know what I mean? If I need something, I ask them, and, and they typically give it to me. So you know what I mean? Like I think it's just that I'm just an easygoing person. I don't bitch and complain about stupid shit that I don't need to bitch and complain about. Like a lot of guys do. Like you know I mean, I get paid well. I don't get paid like the top guys do. But then again, I'm not like. You know what I mean? I'm like, I don't deserve, you know what I mean? I'm, I don't know. I'm just not a great person. I'm like, I deserve more, you know what I mean? I'm not that kind of person. So 
And I love all the suits. I get along with them really well. I'm a very personable person. So I think just that. And then plus my fighting style. I'm just an animal. And they love the way I fight. And people love the way I fight too, which which I actually love because I used to be hated for, for fighting. You know what I mean? Like when I was younger, I got in a lot of fights. I fucked up a lot of people. And people used to hate me or fear me or respect me because of it. And now, like, I get paid and people love me for it. I have fans. So it's honestly pretty awesome that just a punk-ass kid like me that used to love fighting, got in a lot of fights, can actually make something of himself, make money and a living and a career out of it and have people that, that love me for it, you know what I mean? And, and a company that helps me and supports me in my fighting habit, you know what I mean? Because, shit, when I'm done fighting, I don't honestly want to know what I'm going to do besides play video games and maybe train people here and there, you know what I mean? Like... I don't know. Like I said, I'm a winger, so I'm just I'm just winging I'm just winging life just like anyone else, man. I don't know what's going on in my with my life. I'm just winging it, and whatever happens, happens. And, and I'm that kind of person, so that's what I'm doing. And I definitely agree. That's probably one of the reasons why you've been around with the company for so long. Is definitely because uh, Dana White and all of them. They love people that bring the show. They love guys that come to fight, and you always come to fight. You're not there to just hold someone down. You're there to knock them out, which I think all the fans can get behind it. Which is one reason why you're such a fan favorite. And then yeah. I, before we wrap this up or anything, I just want to see, do you have any uh, special shout outs, any training partners or sponsors? Yeah, yeah. I want to give a shout out, a uh, special shout out to Smoke Buddy, uh, Greg Gorski, all my friends at Smoke Buddy. Um, I want to give a shout out to Paul Revlin, uh, Mike Stone, everyone at Rev Gear, you know, Shelly, all those people. They've they've been hardcore supporters of my fighting career. And, and like I said, anytime I need something and I ask them, like, they're there to help me. So I love those guys. Thank you guys so much. Um, I want to thank uh, Ryan Drexler, uh, Jason Manley, everyone at Muscle Farm that helped me train for this fight. I want to thank my coach, Brian Peterson, everyone at PG Grappling, uh, helped me train for my fight. I want to thank uh, Drew Sklove, everyone at Street Sports Simi Valley, helped me for my fight, train for my fight. Uh, I want to thank Richard Leroy, uh, his crew, Walt Wachowski, everyone at City of Dong, helped me train and, fight and prepare for my fight. Uh, my coach, Peter Cunningham, um, everyone at House of Champions that helped me fight, my uh Longtime friend, training partner, slash coach, Herman Baltazar. He, this dude's put in endless hours of work with me and helped me a lot tremendously in my fighting career. Um, inside and outside of fighting, honestly, too. Um, huge shout out to Lana, Lana's the Egg Whites. Lana's just a super, super lovable woman. I love her so much. You know what I mean? Us Italians got to stick together. So big shout out to Lana. I love you. Um, geez, I feel like I'm missing someone. I don't want to feel like I'm missing anybody. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, I also want to give a shout out to uh, everyone who buys my shirts um, off my website from helpashell.com. I'm going to have some hats coming here pretty soon. I had these guys make this hat for me, which is dope. So uh, I might have some hats. You know, everyone that, that supports me in that aspect, you know, uh, buys my shirts, helps me pay for things and, and supports me in that way. Huge shout out. We'll give you a shout out as well for having me on here. You know, let me let me do my thing. Give me a little more exposure. Everyone that interviews me. Honestly, everyone that loves and support, I want to give them a shout out, man. And, and the haters too, fuck you, but even you get a shout out. You know what I mean? Like, I support, I like, I love you guys too, because you're, you're, you know what I mean? Engagements are engagements, and there ain't no such thing as bad publicity. So I love you guys too, so, but fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, I love that. I love how you're giving, trying to give everyone a shout out. A lot of times you all ask these fighters, you know, give shout outs, and they'll just give like one or two shout outs. So it's great to see you. You know, making sure that everyone you know that is there for you, that you support them and you're saying, hey, and I definitely like your hat and your shirts that you've been making. Everyone needs to go check those out. And yeah. I just want to see if you have any last words to your opponent. Uh, no, but I just want to say to those coaches, thanks for the sacrificial lamb. <laughs> I'm a start your boy. And I'm sorry, but that's just the way it's got to be. <laughs> awesome. And everyone needs to be tuning in to ESPN to see this epic UFC fight between Vince from hell, Pachel over uh, Roosevelt, Roosevelt Roberts. Yeah.